I'm going to fly through. We're, we're rolling. I'm going to fly through what we went through yesterday, and then we'll move forward. Uh, you should have your uh, worldview handbooks open in front of you uh, to um, lesson two and uh, Christianity. Uh, we're going to. So um, the the first anchor that we had was the Christian worldview is the way God sees the world. Now we're talking about everyone has a worldview. There's nobody that doesn't have a worldview. Even if people think think they don't have a worldview, they have a worldview. Um, so what is a worldview? It is the way oh, I don't want this world. Uh, so everyone has a worldview. Uh, so uh, uh, just by way of what will we come back to this? Just by way of um, remembering uh, the five life questions are: From where did I come? Uh, why is there such a mess in the world? What hope do I have? What is my purpose in life? And what happens when we die? And for each of these worldviews, uh, we will uh, answer those questions, how that worldview answers those questions. Guys, this will be on YouTube. I, I, guys and gals, uh, I, I would suggest that you watch it uh, tonight or over the weekend, okay? Um, and then we talked about Christianity. Yeah, we don't have to go through that now. We've already done that. Uh, so then we started in on naturalism, and um, we, we talked about a little bit about this. Um, but in, the, in naturalism or humanism, human beings are the center of, um, of everything. In fact, the center of their own universe. Uh, and, and there is a, a good deal uh, in naturalism and humanism of self-rule. Uh, in, in one's life and improve, uh, um, pursuing those things that, um, that someone wants. Um, ostensibly, um, it, it, naturalism, humanism in particular, uh, believes in the betterment of humanity, but in practice, it often doesn't turn out that way, and I'll give you some examples of that. But why doesn't it turn out that way? Hell, right? Our sin nature wants me first, um, no matter no matter what. And we grow up and we become more um, altruistic human beings, but we're still selfish. Uh, if I'm watching Madam Secretary and my kids want to me, I'm like, go away. <laughs> I want to watch. I want this. I want to do this. Right now it's the crown. I'm, I'm watching the crown again. Uh, we did the uh, Elizabeth. Um, so man, not God, is the center of everything in, in um, humanism slash natural, naturalism. Uh, there's no God. There's no moral absolutes. Uh, the material world is studied in science as man's source for understanding. There's nothing beyond the material world. The material world is all that there is. Um, and then... Uh, Man is believed to be inherently good, therefore utopia is possible. And I think I mentioned this yesterday. Obviously, they've never met a toddler, right? Uh, yes. Is it possible to say that man is inherently good if there are no absolutes? Because that's what he's doing. Way to go back to the eleventh grade roadrunner. <laughs> good work. That's that's pretty good. Cool. Oh, by the way, extra credit. Come tonight. Oh. You look kind of like a Bobby Wilson. Uh, Thank you. It's like similar, similar colors on. I don't know what that is. It looks Everyone should read it. I call her Bobsy Twins. But it wasn't a boy. That's, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> We live in a world where that doesn't matter. Gender is just a suggestion. Okay, we're we're yeah, recording this. Why don't we move on? <laughs> um, but obviously, we see instances every day that show that we aren't that we are selfish. Um, everyone, is, even the best of us, um, is selfish. So um, uh, it, it isn't. Uh, it doesn't work that way. What we want and what is best for us. Uh, one's own value, own value system is based on one's needs, and that's problematic. Because what if my needs don't line up with your needs? Right? 
do you see this selfishness while it's while it's pretending to be altruistic? Um, if, if we're just all living for ourselves, that's not altruistic. That's that's selfish. Um, and then uh, actualizing human potential is the key to progress. So self actualization was kind of this buzzword in the 60s and 70s. And self-actualization means making yourself the best self you can be, like getting the most out of your potential. And if everybody is self-actualized, then, um, then we will all live in peace and everything will be perfect. I read a book uh, when I was in one of my psychology classes. Um, it was called From somebody to Rogers, two different uh, psychologists. Uh, oh, what was his name? I can, I can see it in my brain. The guy that did Skinner, B.F. Skinner. Uh, and he put rat, I thought of it because of a Skinner box. He used rats in the, in the Skinner box and, and did a lot of psychological experiences using rats. Carl Rogers was all about, he's the one that came up with in, in therapy with, um, uh, what I think I hear you saying, repeating back to the person what they said, and actually it works, uh, and to help them clarify what they what they're talk, what they mean. Um, but he talked a lot about self actualization. That what the world needs is self actualization. All of us knowing who we are and living uh, our true selves uh, to the world. And so this was called from Skinner to Rogers. And uh, on the inside, where it said, from Skinner to Rogers, it, I, I got it from the library in college. Somebody had written under it, um, or what happens when you put a self-actualized rat in a Skinner box? <laughs> and uh, and, then, then, and how, then how is he going to uh, behave? Is he going to behave altruistically? Somebody else is waving to me. Oh, no, it's still just um, <laughs> So, uh, so, uh, I just said that. Uh, so self-actualization is, is maximizing our potential. Um, and we can, all of this is saying that we can perfect ourselves. Um, even though nobody has ever perfected themselves in all of history, Jesus was already perfect. Uh, it is believed that we can perfect ourselves through our own means. Um, and, and then humanists are... Uh, are not bound by accepted answers to the real questions of life. They only <coughs> discover their own answers. And this crept into, uh, has crept into education where there's no such thing as a wrong answer. That's the answer for you. And they, some, in some places that even happens in math. I don't think Mrs. Schrag would be okay with that. But this is the right answer. Um, and uh, so there's, there's this um, idea of finding our own answers and what is best for us. Um, and then science is, uh, knowledge is based on reason and proof, and there's no faith in Christ. Now, there's nothing wrong with reason and proof, by the way, but there's nothing beyond that. Uh, and emphasizing, emphasizes bringing in the best, uh, bringing out the best in people through scientific inquiry, individual freedom, human reason, tolerance, and self-determination. Again, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's more. Uh, to life than that. That's not all that there is. Um, uh, and then there's this idea of utilitarianism. Have you ever heard this term utilitarianism? Anybody talked about it in social studies? So it's doing what is best for the, be the most people. So uh, if what's best for the most people is to do this, then that's what you do. But that also leaves people falling through the cracks. Right, <coughs> that is what's best for them, um, and so sometimes doing what's best for the most has very, very um, uh, results for those who are left out of that. Um, normative standards for moral behavior are discovered and tested by their consequences. There's no such thing as this is the right thing to do because God said, or this is the right thing to do because because the the law says. You, you figure out what's right for you, and what's right for you might be different than what's right for me. And that, there's some places where that's true, uh, you know, and sometimes that's preferences, 
Um, but it is an island particularly like the, um, but not the country, but the region, um, which is problematic in Um And uh, but I eat a lot of stuff. Uh, so um, that's a preference, but they're not talking about preferences. They're talking about truths and what's true for me and what's true for you. But if truth is true, you know this from last year. It's true for everyone. Uh, but humanism would uh, would deny that. Um, and then there's no God, obviously, in an atheistic worldview. Uh, and so uh, things are ordered uh, somewhat haphazardly, uh, as opposed to the Christian worldview, where God orders uh, our steps and where God is uh, in the center of everything. I'm going to just really briefly give you some background on humanism. Uh, just fly through this a little bit. I don't think that you would. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, and then we'll talk about the five life questions. I'm going to play a little uh, video for you that I can't put on the video here. Um, so, it began in Europe. Uh, the idea of um, humanism began, naturalism began in Europe during the Renaissance. Um, and uh, there was a belief that reason uh, was the cure for all the problems. And we, could, uh, we could come to a solution for all of our problems. Uh, and that began to take place in, in the 17th and 18th centuries. But reason is only as good as the one who is reasoning. Right? If the one who is reasoning has a fatal flaw in that reasoning, then, then that reasoning is valid or, or not optimal at, at very best. Um, and uh, it, it was spurred on, um, naturalism and humanism were obviously spurred on by Charles Darwin's theory of evolution um, that uh, said that we came about by chance um, and um, and uh, evolved from from ooze uh, and there's there's no God. Um, we use a um, evolved natural selection. There's no uh, God behind there. The first uh, Humanist man Manifesto was written in 1933, um, and uh, more uh, manifestos have been written. The second one was in 1973, and there have been more. Uh, and a manifesto is just a statement of what is, uh, and that's, uh, those were made about, um, about humanism. Um, and, and then people began to believe uh, that science and religion were contradictory. Are they contradictory? Not necessarily. I mean, in the beginning, God makes a lot of sense out of the science. Um, and uh, science, um, science isn't necessarily opposed to religion, but science makes a really bad religion. And that's what uh, became their, their religion, their salvation. So here are the, the five life questions, and we're going to answer them from a naturalist humanist view. So from where did I come? The universe created itself. And they would admit that the universe exploded out of nothing, or maybe mathematical swirling mathematical points or something like that, or something infinitesimally small. Um, but uh, but the universe created itself. How the universe could create itself when it wasn't in, and it wasn't made yet, I don't know. Um, but uh, but certainly it was uh, not um, God who started it. Random, impersonal, undirected forces uh, created what we see today. Uh, and humanity is the result of purposeless. Uh, evolutionary development over millions, and now they say billions of years because the clock needed to go uh, longer. Um, and uh, then the second question is why is there such a mess in the world? And, and a humanist would say that there's such a mess in the world because uh, even though people are inherently good, people have not fully actualized, they haven't reached the pinnacle of their human potential. Uh, I would take issue with the fact that we are, we are selfish. Some people are more selfish. I'm way more selfish than those of God. Uh, 
Um, but um, but we are all dirty rotten sinners. We are all selfish. I am to getting what I want. And I have to earn what I want. And that's selfishness. Um, but a humanist would tell you that we can overcome it. And we can live in harmony and peace. And um, uh, with with one another, just based on our own self um, uh, self actualization. So here's where I play a song for you. It's a it's a I'm not sure what happened at the end of the uh, last hour when I played it. I'm not sure I find another version. But um, it's a song by John Lennon. It's a very 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 well known song called Imagine. I can't play it. I can't keep recording for it. So. So if you want to look it up on YouTube and watch a, a video on Imagine, you may do that. And, and it's imagining a perfect world. And it's very much from a humanist uh, viewpoint. That how, so what I want, I want you to think about, and what we'll talk about after we watch this video, is what is John Lennon saying we need to have to have a perfect world? And what do we need to get rid of to have a perfect world? Well, I'll uh, come back and talk about that. I'm going to pause this, not stop it. Uh, and um, so, yeah, so he's saying no possessions. What else? What else do we need? No religion. Has a lot of horrible, have a lot of horrible things had been done in the name of religion? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why? Because God's bad? Because we are. Yeah. What else? Also, a lot of good is no countries. It's interesting to me that the most restricted, the most evil governments in the history of the planet were all gods. Communist Russia, Communist China, Pol Pot, all had, had done atrocious things. As much as we don't want to believe that, as much as we want to think that we're patient, we're good, we are not. And so if humanity is our only hope, we have to. Uh, and then what is my purpose in life? What is my purpose in life? Uh, mankind's purpose is to pr pursue mu mutual agreement and co cooperation, but that doesn't work very often because we're sinful. Um, and uh, to seek knowledge uh, necessary to fix what's wrong with the world, to work toward utopia, to work toward what John Lennon was singing about. Um, that is our, our purpose. Um, but we can't. And then finally, what happens when I die? When I'm die, when I die, I'm dead. That's it. There is nothing um, after this life because there is no supernatural. There is nothing beyond that. There are many uh, well-known uh, humanists, naturalists uh, that you would know: uh, Socrates, Voltaire, uh, David Hume, that we read a little bit about last year, Karl Marx, Charles Darwin. Uh, Mark Twain, Salman Rushdie, um, and and again, people like Karl Marx, Marx had a hand in creating communism, uh, which ends up being the most one of the most uh, violent uh, and deceitful um, countries in, in history. Albert Einstein, Karl Rogers, um, Karl Rogers was a was a um, Abraham Maslow um, had made this hierarchy. You don't get through 
uh, an education degree without learning about Abraham Maslow, Bertrand Russell, Russell Gloria Steinem. Um, and then uh, I want to go back uh, on this, and, and I didn't mean Margaret Sanger. Anybody know Margaret Sanger? Mm -hmm. The founder of Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Margaret Sanger. Uh, that's it. Yeah. And uh, she was a humanist, believing that she was bettering the world. Um, and that worldview affected her life and her outlook and, and what she did. And in fact, Margaret Sanger was a racist, and she wasn't wanting everything to be She was wanting black people to be black people. There was no black people in the world. Um, and I can't imagine it being her. Maybe I can't. Um, and, uh, and so this, this sort of utopia mindset doesn't work out in the world. Um, so I'm going to play a, a video for you, a video clip from a movie called Beautiful Mind, a beautiful mind which is uh, based on a true story about a man named John Nash, who was a mathematician. Um, and uh, end up winning a Nobel Prize. Uh, this particular clip is a professor, a math, math professor, with a bunch of people in a room that are starting their uh, journey in, uh, at Princeton University. Um, and uh, I want you to hear this speech that he gives to this, these young men, one of whom was John Nash. Uh, and uh, I can't put this up there either. We're done for today for you. Uh, 